In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is what the rapture will actually look like. Let me explain. The Bible says that biblically accurate angels fly in chariots of fire, and the word chariot can be translated to millstone. This is what a millstone looks like. So here's an accurate animation of what a chariot of fire would look like. But how does this translate to the rapture? Well, we've seen in the Bible how certain prophets were taken up to heaven in these chariots of fire. 2 Kings 2 verse 11 describes how Elijah was abducted by a chariot of fire. You can pause this video if you please to read the verse. So essentially, we see that this is usually the way angels take humans to heaven. In these saucer-shaped aircrafts that the prophets called chariots of fire. There are also several Hollywood films depicting UFOs rapturing God's righteous people. And as we know, the elites are well aware of the true nature of the world. Movies such as The Knowing, and This is the End, paints a similar story of the rapture looking much different than what we think. Also, the government recently came out admitting that UFOs exist and that they're here right now. Since we are still seeing these chariots of fire to this day, does this mean that we're close to the rapture happening? I've often wondered if there was gods and angels, how advanced their technology must be if they're not just spiritual beings. If they are actually beings from another realm that has access to like technology, how advanced would they actually have to be to create this? This is pretty interesting theory. I like the idea that if the rapture does happen, it's going to look very technological, very sci-fi, very interesting. What's your thoughts? Do you think if the rapture is a thing that it'll look alien-like, or do you think that it'll be more spiritual in nature? I think my problem is that I never know how to talk about my feelings. I talk to myself in my head a lot about how I feel, and I explain it so well. But getting it to actually come out my mouth is so hard. Sometimes you can't always just speak with the soul. Sometimes you have to have an ear to talk to. Seek help because it's never good to just hold this stuff in on your own. This is all the news you're not going to see on TV today, but it's going to be simplified in 60 seconds. Scientists are preparing to send a massive shield into outer space, and they're saying it's come to this. Basically, in theory, this enormous shield could cool down the Earth by blocking sunlight and preventing it from heating up the planet. There's a full video on my page if you want more details. I'm sure everybody already knows whenever this happened, but Meta just officially explained what caused the massive Facebook and Instagram out. Hey, there's a bunch of topics on here that I could touch up on. But the simply that people were down on Facebook and stuff, I'm not sure if that's the case, but hopefully that is and it wasn't just some major hacking organization that just stole a lot of people's personal information. And to the goats being cloned, I'm sure that's not the first time that's happened. What do you guys think? 10 unusual things that you will see when your third eye is open. And by the way, get ready for this. You're going to want to save it because there's nothing like this shared anywhere on TikTok. If you are experiencing more than three of these, then you need to do the following. Head to here and look for this at the top. Thank me later. Okay, the first one is colours. You might see colours randomly every day at the corners of your eyes or actually when you close your eyes. Number two, you may start to see like a misty sort of um, outline around people's heads. This is auras trying to come through to you. Number three, you may be able to see energy sort of like clouds or um, how can I put it, like a smoky sort of movement in the air. That's energy. Energy is always moving, so it may be quick and fast, or little spots of light, but either way, that's the energy. And before, pressure between your eyebrows, like a pulsating, or just feeling a little bit like heavy in between your eyes. Five images, when you close your eyes, it could be anything, but when you close your eyes, you just get pictures. Six, this is a common one, and it can be a little bit scary, but you start to see faces before you go to sleep, so when you close your eyes. Number seven, you may start to see images of space when you close your eyes again, or in your mind's eye, or even maybe dragons or other alien beings, yep. But eight, you may see actual energy portals to the other side, like a, a swirly sort of sensation. It looks like a, a whirlwind. Number nine, you may actually start to see situations or people from a different perspective and start to have a general sort of different understanding about their behaviours and why they do certain things. Number 10, here we go. This is spiritual vision. So premonitions, predictions, you may see them in your mind's eye, you may see them in your dreams. They can be a bit overwhelming at first, but once you've opened that door, oh my gosh. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I have a third eye that's open, but when it comes to premonition or prediction, 
I have this ability to know when I'm about to, to see someone that I haven't seen in a while. I could just think about them. I could be like, oh man, it's been a while since I've seen this person. Next thing you know, I'm seeing them moments later or hours later. It's really crazy. I don't know if it's just pure coincidence or what's happening or if I just have good premonition or intuition, but that does happen a lot for me. How about you guys? Do you guys have any of these abilities? Does any of this relate to you? Let me know in the comments. 200,000 years ago, the human brain more than doubled in size out of nowhere. And then we go to places like Gobekli Tepe to bring it back home to that. They radiocarbon date those pillars to be 11,600 years old, but they find, this is what's fascinating, that when they dig down through the layers underneath Gobekli Tepe to try to like basically give a time timeline of figuring out sure. when things happened, they find something so unusual that you're never going to hear anyone mainstream talking about it. They find that at the Gobekli level that they have this advanced, I mean, with agriculture and other things that came out of nowhere. Like literally, there's like a layer where all of a sudden agriculture and all these things start happening and then the layer right below it they find hunter gatherer evidence imagine there's a primitive type of person that's been here for hundred thousand years or more wandering around mm -hmm. living in caves killing animals like trying to survive and imagine if all of a sudden this area of sumer mesopotamia this emergence of a different human comes like out of nowhere and it's not related to evolutionary means i firmly believe after studying the tablets they try to claim ownership for creation of humans in different tablets for different people think of a pretty interesting theory what if when the human mind developed two hundred thousand years ago Say that mind developed for a full 100,000 years after it started to get that initial boom. Who's to say they didn't become so advanced that they created equipment that could go down into Earth and that's where that civilization lives to the point where they forgot about the outside of Earth. They live within Earth and they've lived there for so long, 100,000 years plus that they no longer know the outside of Earth. That's a really crazy theory, I know, but it's a fun one to think about. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, we've improved even more since the last time you've seen it. 17% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, but we're still at 80% plus of the viewers that watch my videos are not subscribed, but they keep coming back for more content. To the 17% that are subscribed, thank you so much. We think. Uva. It is. If space is a vacuum, fire can't exist within a vacuum. Right? Right? I don't know. If there's no air, there's no oxygen to feed the fire. Yeah. How is the sun fire? <laughs> it's a chemical reaction. Like it's I don't think it's like but normal. In a vacuum? I don't know, man. I don't maybe it has its own atmosphere. Yeah, that's, probably, yeah. that's yeah. what I thought of. Yeah, you would have to, right? But then wouldn't it burn its own atmosphere up? Be easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature on land on the surface is completely different than in the middle, and it's like it's not as hot on the surface as I thought it would be. Yeah. How yeah. hot is it? According to West Texas A and M, the burning of the sun is not chemical combustion; it's nuclear fusion. Don't think of the sun as a giant campfire; it's more like a giant hydrogen bomb. Whoa, that's gnarly. That's nuts. <laughs> that's so it's not. Gnarly. It's not even like fire at that point. It's just like. Dude, it's a ball just, of just just hot radiation. It, it literally says the sun burns hydrogen several hundred million tons per second. I don't mm. think about it like probably every five days. But how does does just stars? I don't get it. No. How are they? How how do they have enough fuel to just keep burning? Is it because they but they they die, they die? But there's an infinite amount, and space is growing. And how does one start to be a star? Yeah. Is he getting mad? <laughs> <laughs> just, just two tiny little things in space just get really mad and they interact with each other and become a star. There's going to be so many people watching this like you guys. <laughs> the fact that there is a giant ball of nuclear energy out there in space is kind of baffling to the mind. I know there's a lot of people that do not believe in the sun. They do not believe in the moon. They think that there's some kind of plasma or hologram. There's a lot of theories that go behind it. But to me, it, it is pretty mind-blowing to think of how the process is created and how lucky we are as a planet to have the sun to, to help guide this, this earth to prosper as well as it does. This covenant of God. <clears throat> what blood? The blood of this covenant. Glory to God. <laughs> Cut the covenant with his father God. Glory. <laughs> yes, like Moses.
Jesus of old. They come, oh, 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 they come in one. Oh. <laughs> Don't ever do it. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself. Don't ever do it. Absolutely stunning. It's just delicious. <laughs> it is so good. And he will be like Moses, and he'll live 120 years. And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Preach it, brother. Preach it, brother. Preach it. Just before the cross. And we have a healing covenant. <laughs> mm. Dwells in. Me, the pure, spotless blood of God. And the Hesed was performed for me. He's my blood brother, and my father is my friend. <laughs> and as he is, so are we in this world. Glory to God, I don't have it. I never will have it. And I don't mind telling you, I'll never be sick again in my life hereafter forever. Not one time. I will never. Say what? <laughs> Today? We know your mama. Days of my life, Joy. Thank God they finally got something nice looking up here. Man, this individual disturbs me so much. It's like watching a horror movie every time that I see this individual. I'm not trying to be offensive, and I'm not trying to offend anybody that's a supporter of Kenneth Copeland, but... Can anyone answer me this question as to why does he have a following that's so big? Like, why? how do people not see that this is an individual that's manipulating the system for financial gain? Or how do they not see how bizarre and evil he seems? Like... I can't, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. Last video that I had him in, people were in agreement with me. They see the same individual that I see. They think they see a demon. I just need to know how come so many people that are following a faith follow this individual and don't see the facade. Let me know in the comments on this because I'm baffled. Pyramids are not tombs. Changed my mind. This is a real Egyptian tomb, you know, where mummies of pharaohs were actually found. Grand entrances, spacious hallways, lavish architecture, art and carvings everywhere commemorating their deaths. And this is the burial chamber in the biggest tomb in the world, the Great Pyramid of Giza. A plain and uncentered granite box in a boring room with no carvings nor art, like anywhere in the entire pyramid. Oh, and no mummy was found here either. It was stolen by thieves who apparently took the hieroglyphs in the walls too. Here's an actual sarcophagus for a cat and another one for a person. Here are a few more from the same time period as Giza, all covered with majestic carvings and hieroglyphs that were crucial for preparing bodies for the afterlife. And that's the sarcophagus in Giza, the biggest and most important tomb ever built. The pyramid itself is just awkward to navigate with tight corridors and questionable architecture apparently designed to stop thieves. Meanwhile, the Valley of Kings is an absolute marvel, what you'd expect royalty to be buried in with no attempt at keeping grave robbers out. Oh, what's that? The Valley of Kings was made over a thousand years after after Giza, during which time I guess they learned how to carve and paint on the walls of tombs, despite there being hieroglyphs far older than Giza itself. Well, what about the tombs at Saqqara, which are as old as Giza, yet adorned with the carvings, architecture, and even statues that you'd expect from a sacred burial chamber? If tombs looked like this 4,500 years ago, why would the most important one ever built during the same time look like that? Nice try, Google debunkers. Maybe try DuckDuckGo. What's your thoughts on this Pyramid of Giza? Do you think that there's a false narrative being led to the Pyramid of Giza to keep people's minds distracted of what the pyramids could potentially have been used for? I'd understand the pyramids being more simplistic if they were used more as a tool for whatever purpose, whether it was energy, maybe it was a giant generator. That Pyramid of Giza is just a giant generator. What's your thoughts of the Pyramid of Giza? Do you think there's something more about it? I, I'm always interested in this theory, so lay it on me. So, I'm in London, I always like to pop in sound. If you look, those who have eyes to see, see, yeah? So I'm going to show you something. This is what, what we're up against. Most people walk past this building, not have a clue. Except those who know, know. So when you understand symbolism, it's a language for the ruling elite. You'll know, yeah, that the very, very builders and fabricators of your reality 
or Satanus, aka Satanus. I've never heard of anyone be called a Saturnist. I didn't know that was even a thing. So Saturnists are the same as Satanists, or is that a different type of belief in general? Let me know, because I've never heard of Saturnists before in my life. In 1908, President Teddy Roosevelt sought to protect the Grand Canyon from timber and mining operations. Explorer G.E. Kincaid, anticipating the closure, mounted an expedition to the area to find minerals. But what he discovered there was something completely unexpected. Uh, approximately 40 miles upriver from El Tavar Crystal Canyon, Kincaid observed unusual sediment stains and upon investigation found a cavern entrance with steps leading to it, suggesting a man-made structure. Inside, Kincaid found writings on the walls not in English or Native American scripts, but in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. This finding suggested a historical connection far beyond local or known civilizations. The cave system revealed a vast underground city, estimated to house up to 50,000 people, complete with granaries, cooking areas, and artifacts, indicating a sophisticated society with knowledge of metalwork and possibly agriculture. Among the findings were granaries with preserved seeds, tools made of copper indicating a lost art of hardening the metal, and various artifacts that pointed to a technologically advanced civilization. The complexity of the cave system with engineered passageways and rooms challenged contemporary understandings of ancient civilizations in North America. Kincaid's findings led to a Smithsonian expedition led by Professor S. A. Jordan, which further explored the cave system, uncovering a central chamber with a statue resembling Buddha, hinting at a cultural amalgamation or influence from distant lands. The artifacts and the layout of the cave suggested a deliberate sophisticated design contradicting the notion of an isolated or primitive local civilization. Despite significant discoveries, mainstream researchers and the Smithsonian have labeled the account as a hoax and dismissing the claims of an advanced civilization predating Native Americans in the Grand Canyon and the possibility of ancient transoceanic contacts that might have influenced pre-Columbian American civilizations. Any and all attempts to further explore or validate Kincaid's findings face governmental restrictions, with areas off-limits for exploration. This remarkable discovery aligns with local tribal legends, such as those of the Hopi, suggesting a historical basis for tales of ancient peoples and non-human entities emerging from the Grand Canyon, blending myth with tangible archaeological intrigue. Now, I do not know how much of this is true. I'm just going off of what the internet has said, and I've heard a couple of other individuals, like Billy Carson, and I think Dr. Greer, they talked about how NASA owns portions of the Grand Canyon and the government. To me, I would love to know what's in the Grand Canyon exactly. I'm sure there was something utilized in the Grand Canyon. It, if we're talking about a world that has advanced technology, and things of the past like that, then it would be really interesting to take into consideration since there's a Buddha statue there, since there's Egyptian hieroglyphs there, who's to say that this was not a central teleportation area where a lot of people could teleport to or from, and that is just forgotten history or it's being kept from us by other governing forces. Because that would be what makes the most amount of sense, is if they're jumping from place to place, of course their stuff would be here as well, and from different cultures as well. That's an interesting theory. Let me know what you think. I thought this was America, and I have to have permission, I have to get a permit to build a fence. So we are in the process of building a house, and obviously with that comes lots of surveys. But one survey that we have to get is a tree survey. We have to pay for a survey company to come out and, and survey all of the trees on our property so that we can then show the government, the local municipality, what trees are on our property so that they can then tell us which trees we are and are not allowed to cut down. And we're only allowed to cut down the trees that are within the footprint of where we are building and ones that are smaller than a certain diameter at breast height. And if, and if they're, they're, they're too big and you take them down and they're not in that spot, 
you have to pay the government to take down trees off your own property or you can replant trees, but you're still having to pay trees and then put trees back on your property in other places. We paid for the property. And we pay taxes on the property. And 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 now we gotta pay for a survey so that the government can tell us what trees we are and are not allowed to take off of our property. I have to get a building permit so that it can be tax assessed. If I don't and the tax assessor comes and sees that building, they could potentially charge me extra on top of my taxes. It's it's ridiculous. Go. I personally could not tell what that was. I think I seen like a large white head, but I'm not sure. I could not see it that clearly. It's really dark. In editing, I'll probably try to lighten up the image so it's a little bit more visible, but I really couldn't tell what that was. If it was potentially an alien or something like that, I would have had to continue forward, but I would be honestly afraid that it was a bear or something because I don't know where this is taking place. There is no muscle memory. Everything that you've experienced since birth is in your brain. You just are unable to actually access all those different memories. Some things we remember, some things we don't remember. Where is all this stored? Here's a, a brain model. Well, actually, I'll just keep it together. So here's the model. Here's the front of the brain. Here's the back of the brain, the side view from the right. And we see, of course, this is all colorized, but it helps us understand things with the colors. And these are brain regions, and they all have different kinds of cells, okay? Here's Here's that frontal lobe up here. The red all the way forward is the frontal lobe. This is the motor strip. So when you have a thought about something and you want to do something, I want to raise my arm up, this red area is going to start firing up a program. There is no muscle memory. There is no muscle memory. It's really the brain. That's the memory that sets up the program, you know, the motor program to do something. So it's like riding a bike, right? We always heard that. It's muscle memory. Muscles have no memory. But the brain has a memory program for riding a bike. I get what this individual is saying, that there's no physical muscle memory. There's no m muscle that holds memory. It's just a part of the brain that fires off a certain program or a, a memory that gets triggered to do what you want to do. Like, for example, I play guitar, saxophone, and piano. I would consider my ability to do so through muscle memory because I just was taught so much on how to do things. But in reality, it's not literally a muscle that contains the memory. It's just a certain portion of my brain that remembers how to do it. So, I, I mean, it, this is kind of an odd topic, but I see what he's saying, and I'm more or less curious on what your opinions are because it is an interesting thought. What does the red have to do? This is wild. It's written for the temple to be rebuilt that ushers in the end times. All the tools that they use within the temple need to be cleansed. In order to do that, they sacrifice a red heifer. There's only been nine red heifers ever sacrificed. The last red heifer to have been sacrificed was 2,000 years ago. A cattle rancher in Texas got invited with these uh, rabbis to go look for red heifer. They found five. The process was insane. They can never have been yoked. No one could have leaned on them. That's why it's been 2,000 years. They determined and we finally found them. These five heifers are in Israel right now being like protected and guarded. They have nine months to sacrifice this red heifer because they can't be like, older than three years old. He's basically saying like, if this happens, you know we're now in the trajectory of the end, times. end times prophecy stuff. What's crazy too, with each sacrifice, they always mix the ashes of the previous red heifers. When they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they also found a jar that had the previous nine red heifers' oh ashes. Gosh. Weird. Dating yeah. back to Moses. Very interesting. I've never heard of this prophecy before, so this is a new one to me. 
I am curious though that that's so much that's so much dedication for another country to come to another country just to try to find the perfect red heifer. That was really interesting. I'm curious to see the outcome of this. See that drip where this thing's still connected? It's not supposed to be there. This is Kapilikaya. It is an unfinished rock tomb in Turkey. They cut a hole around this monument because of the way water drains through a mountain. You can see that that stained part is stained because mold gets in there when it doesn't drain. Insane forethought for protecting something. We know it's unfinished because there's 13 other ones in Turkey that are finished, and we can compare those to this one. This phenomenon is all over the world. You can see that projects were started and unfinished, like this Moai, the biggest one ever on Easter Island, which looks strikingly similar to this guy in Greece. Another unfinished project is the Barabar Caves in India. The interior finish of the walls is smoother than countertop granite you have in your house. Kailasa Temple, also in India, was still being finished. Kailasa's neighbor, the Ajanta Caves, were still being finished as well. Hindu pillars are always the most exquisite in the world. The unfinished obelisk in Egypt was still literally being scooped out of the quarry. Longyu Caves in China were recently discovered, still being finished. Yangshan, the biggest stone ever quarried, is left abandoned. Further east, you have the Yonaguni Monument, which is underwater off the coast of Japan. The bit of Van Coyle was abandoned while they were finishing it. Then you have the Maidum Pyramid in Egypt, which would have been almost as big as the Great Pyramid, and the interior looks almost exactly like the resonant chamber inside of the Great Pyramid. In Lebanon, they discovered an even bigger stone in Baalbek that was underneath the original one. Both of these were very likely going to end up at the temple. So if a group of people very long ago has the ability to cut and carve and move these stones, then why do they just abandon them seemingly out of nowhere? This year, we're very likely about to... I'm curious to know the answer to that as well. I have a couple of theories of it on my own. One of them being, what if they were just demonstration or a model of what they were doing? So they just did it in that area to demonstrate, hey, this is the concept. This is how we're going to create it. And then they left it behind to go work on the actual piece. That kind of makes sense to me. But I don't know. This is a pretty good one that I'm hoping that gets a little bit more resolve out of it. What do you guys think it's all about? Do you think that it's just a modeled image of what they were creating? Or do you think that something happened in the events of creating it and they just had to stop? It was the pruder cake of the Kennedy assassination. But then he slowed it way down. And it was so slow that you could almost see the air moving. Then you saw the driver take a gun and go like this and shoot Kennedy. And the bullet comes out of the gun this slow, very, very, very slow. And it hits Kennedy in the head. And you see everything flying out of his head. And I'm thinking, this isn't the tape I ever saw before. So I said, is this a doctor tape? What's this about? And he said, this is the original one. And I said, um, no. And he said, well, I'm going to show you the one that you've seen on the media. Now, the next tape is your typical one where the driver just keeps driving, never even flinches. Okay? And he stops the tape. And he says, look at the tree. And there's the top of a tree growing in air. And he says, this is the one that you're seeing on the media. And it's been doctored. He looked very, very intently at me. And he said, nothing is as it appears to be. It's been so, so long since I've seen the assassination video of John F. Kennedy. So I really don't know. And I, I don't really want to go out of my way to look at that content again. Because it's pretty gruesome. But if that's the case, that's a huge catch to see a half clipped tree. And from what this individual is saying, the driver is the one that actually shot John F. Kennedy. That's really crazy. I've not heard of the octopus murders. I'm assuming this is a movie or something that's on a, a streaming platform. Fill me in if you can, or if you've seen this, because I'm kind of curious. These are the ones you call the indigo, the new children coming in that are considered the hope of the world. They're the gift of the future. They are coming in with everything in place. See, as we go through the going into the new earth and everything, our DNA is being changed so that we can adapt to all the changes that are happening now. These children are coming in with everything in place. Everything is there. They don't have to have any changes made. They are ready and they're willing to go. 
This is why they're a totally different breed. And uh, Nikki did a good job in her lecture talking about this group. You can understand how they are. I've lectured at conferences about the new children and where there's been panels of these new children. And they explained it. They said, we're just bored is all it is. We get it the first time. Why do they have to keep telling us over and over again when we understand that we know the answers? The teacher will ask them for the answer to a problem, maybe a mathematical problem, and they'll give them the answer. They said, how did you know that? I know it. That's not good enough. So naturally the kids get frustrated. But they said, you must not put these kids on medication. And this is what Vicky, Nikki was saying. The medication will just dampen these abilities. But these are the hope of the world. And she was repeating what I've said in my lectures before. Give these kids challenges. They're just bored. Give them something else to do. Even a teacher, if you just give the kids something to tear apart and put back together again, it's something to challenge their mind. So these are the three waves, and they've all come in here to help us to move into the new earth. Because we're moving into it now. The vibrations and the frequencies are changing. We are moving into a new world that something has never happened before in the history of the universes. Everybody's watching, all the other beings. This is the greatest show on earth. Because they want to see, are we going to be able to pull it off? This is pretty interesting. When I was a kid, from kindergarten to about third to fourth grade, I had the ability to solve math problems instantly without having to do calculations. I just knew what the numbers were. I don't know if my brain could just see how the book was operating or whatever it was. I would solve the math problems extremely fast. And it was to the point where I would solve them so fast and so accurately that the teacher thought that I was cheating. And aside from that, when I finished it, I would bother the other kids because I was as well bored. Like, I remember it very clearly. I used to get pushed back into the table at the far end of the school when I was done doing schoolwork. So I don't know if that's an indigo child thing or if that's just a special way your brain works in general, but I do know that I had that ability as a kid. I, I'm not so good at math or anything like that now. I've kind of lost that talent, but it was to a point where I knew the mathematical equations and I would just fill them out slowly and just act as if I was still doing the math while the class was still going. But yeah, I, I've, I've experienced something quite similar to this, and I know a lot of people that need to be constantly engaged. They constantly need to be challenged because they get so bored so easily. So I guess they would be considered indigo children as well with ADHD. <laughs> What's your thoughts on this? Do you think that indigo children are really a thing, or do you think it's just a fancy schmancy word for just kids with ADHD and maybe even a special mind? There's a reason why when you were growing up, you didn't feel like you fit in. Or maybe you've always felt like Earth is in your home. You might be an indigo child. After World War II, the Earth started raising its frequency. Meaning, when children were born, um, they were more tapped into the spiritual realm. Since these children were vibrating at a very high frequency. Here are some signs that you were born as an indigo child. When you meet people, you can see through them very easily. You can sense other people's energy. And it's crazy because when you meet new people, Oftentimes, then not other people cannot see what you're seeing in that person. And you could pick up on lies very, very easily. Another sign is that you've always felt like you were older than your age. At a very young age, you could have felt like you were more mature than other people. Maybe you even got along better with people that were older than you. Another sign is that you're an open-minded person. Have you ever noticed that some people confide in you because they feel like you won't judge them? And people often tell you, you know, their personal business, their sexual orientation, what they believe in, what they don't believe in. You often make people feel very, very comfortable around you. Another sign is that you could feel people's energy very, very easily. Also, you could be an introvert. You tend to feel energetically drained when you're around too many people. Thus, you need time alone for you can recharge. And maybe there's some days that you don't feel like talking to a lot of people. There's just some times that you just want to be left alone. You could be a very creative person. You can draw, paint, you could be a musician. 
do poetry, and you feel like you have a vivid imagination. Another sign is that you rather be alone than to be around fake people or people that stress you out. You like to make genuine, real connections. You're also a very intuitive person. You know that little voice inside your head? 99% of the time, that voice is correct. You could often give people advice, people come to you for advice, or when something bad is about to happen, you could feel it. You don't know what this picture is. This is the High Priestess in the Tarot, and the High Priestess is a very intuitive, spiritual, psychic person. So do you think that you were born an indigo child? Let me know in the comments. Now to me, this is more the lines of just being more self-aware. I don't know if I would like to call this as being a indigo child. I just really think that it's more of a, a passive perception type deal where you can analyze a little bit better. It might even fall in the line of autism, to be honest. I just feel like all of those signs are just judge of character, good intuition, and common sense, really. I, that's my belief in it, to be honest. But you can let me know in the comments what you think exactly because I am always curious about this. This is a new topic to me that I find pretty interesting because there's so many different forms to it that allow you to think a little bit more on what it could possibly be or if there's a specific meaning to it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below to each clip that we watched in the order that we watched them in. And with that being said, have a good day.